evening and welcome. I'm Gary Sullinger. I have the privilege of not only being president of Baker College of Port Huron, but more importantly, I have the opportunity to be president of the Greater Port Huron Area Chamber of Commerce in the current year. This is the 17th time that the Chamber of Commerce has partnered with the Port Huron Area School District to recognize the academic achievement of the outstanding students of the Port Huron Area Schools. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce those persons who are here at the head table with me. I'm gonna start on my far right, and for some of you it'll be your left, and for the rest of you it'll be your right, so if you'll bear with me. On the far end is Ken Kraft. Ken is the Director of Public Relations and Fine Arts for the Port Huron Area School District. But more importantly, Ken's the one that makes all of this evening happen. He puts together all the details and, and makes everything function as fine as they do. Next to Ken is Jim Sharon. Jim is president of the Board of Education, and also with him is his wife, Lori. Next is Bill Johnson, who is president and CEO of Semco Energy, at least for the time being, <laughs> and his wife, Judy. On, on my right is Bill Kimball, superintendent of schools, and his wife, Willann. And next to them is our speaker, Michael Rowe, president of Central Michigan University, and his wife, Monica, who is the official CMU ambassador. And she's taking over for Bill Johnson, because he used to always tell me he was, so. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to take a moment uh, to thank the 500 plus businesses of our community that are members of the Chamber of Commerce who thanks to their contributions and the belief in the importance of honoring academic excellence and our community's future leaders make the program possible. These members annually donate time and money to the Chamber's Scholar Scramble, which is a golf outing, in which all the proceeds go to pay for this event. By the way, sponsorship and golf outings, if any of you have a free day on May 24th are still available and we'd love to have you join us. I'd like to also take this opportunity, our brand new director, executive director for the Chamber of Commerce, Lisa Hatch, is someplace here and I'd like Lisa just to stand up so people can see her. I know I saw her someplace. Way over there. Also, a very special person to me is the lady who is gonna be up here next year for those of you that will be returning with another young person and that is the president-elect of the Port Huron Area Chamber of Commerce, local attorney and local magistrate, Cynthia Platzer, who's also over there. Cynthia is going to be my replacement, and I am counting the days. Um, I think some of the very important people besides the young persons that we're gonna recognize very shortly, the ones that have helped make all of this evening possible are the parents, and I hope that each of you as parents feel that you're being as honored tonight as your son or daughter is, because we know that much of your student's success is dependent upon the support that they get at home from you. Also providing the educational environment that has allowed each student here tonight to achieve a high academic level is the excellent education system that we have here in Port Huron, and the teachers who have led their classes, our students' classes, for the past 12 years. Before we begin dinner tonight, I'd like to turn things over for a moment to Ken Kraft so that he can give us a moment of thanks and then we'll go from there. Ken? <clears throat> On this occasion of celebration, I'd like to invite you to join me for a moment of thanksgiving. And this is just a moment for us to consider and reflect on what we have to be thankful for. Let us be thankful for the diversity of our community that gives us all a rich opportunity to learn about the similarities and differences that make us who we are. To the adults, I invite you to give thanks for the achievements of our children as they have excelled in academics, athletics, activities, and community service. May we be thankful, too, for the friendships, experiences, and accomplishments that have enriched their lives. To the students, I invite you to give thanks for the sacrifices of your parents 
who have provided so much over the years. Transportation to hundreds of events, discipline and expectation as well as support and praise tempered by guidance and correction as needed. Financial support for varsity jackets, class dues, competitions, prom, senior pictures, lunches, and the list goes on. I'm a parent with three high school kids. <laughs> May we all give thanks for the dedication of teachers, coaches, and sponsors who have provided encouragement and motivation in the classroom, on the playing field, in clubs and activities and leadership groups, helping our students face the trials and challenges that made them who they are. And may we all count our blessings and appreciate the strength we find in our faith and our beliefs when we face life's tribulations for health and happiness and comfort and direction. And now may we be thankful for the food we are about to receive, for the strength and nourishment it provides for us, and for the fellowship of this social opportunity. The staff of Wadham's Banquet Center will now direct tables to the buffet line. We hope you enjoy your meal and the evening. At this point, it's my very distinct privilege to have the opportunity to introduce the president, of the Board of Education for the Port Huron Area School District, Mr. Jim Sharon. Thank you, Gary, and uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make a little uh, commentary regarding the two great schools that are here tonight. Uh, both my wife and I are politically correct in two different ways. First of all, I graduated from Porter and High School in 1974. And my wife, thank you, and my wife graduated from Porter and Northern the same year. Now, the one thing that we noticed also, we are politically correct in another way also, but we're kind of mixed and matched. I have blue on and she has red on, so you know, we're trying to hit both sides of it. Uh, let me welcome all the students that are here tonight. Uh, I have one year left before I will stand before you as um, a board member and also a parent. My son is a junior at Port Huron Northern, and um, uh, I wonder how I'll handle it uh, if I have the opportunity to speak because I'm sure parents are out here thinking, especially if it's your first student that's graduating, it's always a very emotional time. It's exciting for the kids, and yet it's a major step in your life. Uh, we can all see as a transition period in our lives uh, that time right after high school and going into college or technical school or the uh, services or, or right into the workforce. It's a major time in our life, and yet we're all dreamers, and we're thinking at uh, this time of our life when we're um, when we're uh, seniors, we're thinking, and I remember back a few years ago when I was graduating, you know, I, I can change the world. And, and uh, so I, I came up with a little bit of th um, a thought for all of you to take with you tonight. But before I give you that thought, um, let me just introduce the other board members that are here tonight. From the Port Huron Area School District, there are seven board uh, members. We have, uh, tonight we have uh, Jeff Stout. Uh, Jeff, if you would stand, and his wife, Kathy, who is also a district teacher. Barb Daniels, board member, and her husband, Tom. Carol Cooley is here tonight. She is the vice president of the Board of Education. And Mr. Gerald Andrews and his wife, Marianne. And the two board members, uh, I haven't seen them tonight, but the other two board members that were not able to make it tonight, uh, Malcolm Floyd and Jeff Beckett. Regarding just a quick thought about changing the world, this was um, on someone's tomb that was written a number of years ago. Um, it actually was written by an anonymous person, but I thought it was very fitting for a thought tonight. It says, when I was young and free, and my imagination had no limits, I dreamed of changing the world. I hope we have some dreamers that want to change the world here tonight. And yet, it goes on to say, as I grew older and wiser, I discovered the world would not change. So I shortened my sights somewhat and decided to only change my country. But it too seemed immovable. As I grew into my twilight years, in one last desperate attempt, I settled for only changing my family, those closest to me, but alas, they would have none of it either. 
And now as I lie on my deathbed, I suddenly realize if I had only changed myself first, then by example, I would have possibly changed my family. And from their inspiration and encouragement, I would have been better off and possibly able to better my country. And who knows, I may then have been able to change the world. I leave that with you tonight with all the open eyes that you have and all the great opportunities that especially this group this evening has. Uh, be encouraged, want to change the world, but please start with yourself. Do what you can for yourself to better yourself and then your family and create a, whip, uh, a rippling effect into the world. Thank you and congratulations on all your years at the Port in the Portland Area School District. Thank you. It's now a true pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce someone who is a, a great, great champion for our community. An individual who's deeply committed to the importance of education. He's an innovative, highly successful business leader in our community. Mr. Bill Johnson, Chairman of the Board, President, and CEO of Semco Energy. Thank you very much, Gary. You uh, all hear from me 12 times a year. It's uh, nice to greet you in person. And uh, it's my privilege to uh, introduce our speaker tonight, uh, Dr. Mike Rao. Uh, Mike is the new president of Central Michigan University. I have the uh, privilege of serving on the Board of Trustees at CMU, which is my alma mater. And the most significant thing that I have done and will ever do uh, during the time on the Board of Trustees is to select the new president. And uh, I had the opportunity to participate in that process, which resulted in the selection of Mike as the 12th president of CMU. Uh, Mike is a graduate of the University of South Florida, his undergraduate degree as a PhD from the University of Florida, where he also served as assistant to the president uh, for some period of time. Professionally, he's been the president of Mission College in Silicon Valley in California and uh, the chancellor at Montana State University in Haver, which is near Great Falls, Montana, before coming to Central Michigan University. <coughs> Rather than go through a long list of professional things, let me tell you about Mike. He is a technology-oriented person. That's really important in this day and age in the changes that are going to occur in education, particularly in higher education. Second, he listens. And being a listener is a, is a very, very fine trait for a university president. He's student focused. At CMU, he's already met with students many, many times in all kinds of small groups and organizations to listen to what students, his customers, have to say. He's a good communicator. He has good leadership skills, which involve vision, direction, and motivation. And most importantly, from our point of view, he has a bias for action. Kind of operates by the old adage, I may not always be right, but I'm never in doubt. <laughs> and uh, uh, above all, of course, he has Monica. And uh, Monica uh, comes with this uh, arrangement and is a CMU ambassador. And actually, her responsibilities are uh, clear and they're important. Uh, her role is to uh, uh, facilitate the involvement of international students at CMU and to also work to uh, facilitate diversity among our student body and among our faculty. And she's already making a significant contribution uh, to that process as well. CMU is a fine school with a wonderful tradition. It's going to change a lot, all for the better, and to become a world-class place that offers to students around Michigan and elsewhere the kind of education that will be important and valuable to them under the leadership of this fine man. So please welcome, if you will, please, Dr. Mike Rao. Mike. Thank you, Bill. I wasn't sure who was supposed to walk up to the podium after that introduction. That was very nice. 
Really, I, I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and to share a few thoughts with you. Um, high school seniors are always a lot of fun. Uh, high school seniors who have achieved academic honors are even more fun. This is really a treat for me. I'd like to be the f one of the first to say congratulations on behalf of CMU and uh, I look forward to uh, having an opportunity to uh, share and, uh, uh, and, and learning more about the academic award recipients. And congratulations to all of the families and uh, friends out there who supported uh, each of you as well. Before I continue uh, any further, I do want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, CMU trustee uh, Bill Johnson, who did not tell you that he was just elected chair of the board, and uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, this will be a great opportunity for CMU, and Bill is absolutely right. Uh, CMU is going to change a lot, and uh, we expect for the better. Um, Superintendent uh, Kimball, thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I do think I'd be remiss having talked with my staff if I didn't also thank and, uh, and uh, show appreciation to Ken Kraft because I understand that uh, he worked tirelessly to make this happen. <clears throat> I'd also like to uh, bring greetings to my uh, colleague, uh, Baker College President, uh, Dr. Uh, Sullinger, and uh, School Board President, uh, Mr. Sharon. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight. You know, you're graduating at a really extraordinary time. Uh, you will, without question, face some challenges, but also some incredible opportunities as you begin to prepare for the rest of your lives. I want to talk with you just a little bit tonight about some of the changes in society that, that are going on and some of the opportunities that I think each of you will have as you walk into the 21st century. Certainly it's no secret to any of you that, that there have been major changes, particularly evident in the last 10 years. Uh, we were known as a manufacturing or industrially based economy. Uh, some of us have called uh, the change uh, one to an information or a technology based society or economy, but I'd like to call it something else. I'd like to call it an intellectually based society and economy. And certainly without question, this new economy focuses on the use, not just knowledge, but the use of knowledge rather than manual skills alone. And there's an example that always sticks out in my mind when I talk a little bit about this, and it's the example of the U.S. Steel Corporation. Just 20 years ago, I know it's hard for some of you to think about 20 years ago, but just 20 years ago in 1980, U.S. Steel had 120,000 employees, largely doing manual sorts of things. Right now, there are less than 20,000 employees at U.S. Steel, and very few of those jobs, 20,000 jobs, are anything like what one, the 120,000 jobs were. And in the, pro in the process of that transition, it was thought that, oh my gosh, you know, the world's coming to an end, it's a terrible time. Uh, things are just horrible. And by the way, I should mention that U.S. Steel does produce the same amount of steel now that it did back in 1980. Nonetheless, technology and certainly robotics have played a major role. Uh, there's no count necessarily on the number of jobs that were created that were related to technology manufacturing, software, maintenance, upgrades. But the point is that all of these jobs are very, very different. And I wouldn't be surprised if I were able to find out that there were more than 120,000 other jobs that were created in the technology sector, having had the opportunity to spend some time in Silicon Valley. And let me talk with you just a little bit about that. There were some interesting things that our team had an opportunity to learn while we were out in Silicon Valley at Mission College, and then certainly some important things too at Montana State University Northern as well. At Mission, we were located right in the heart of Silicon Valley, a very lucky circumstance for us, uh, where some would say that the new economy was, be, was at the time in the process of being born, if you will. The valley was booming. We wanted to be a part of it, and so what we did is we started to pursue opportunities to partner with these new high-tech industries that were just popping up left and right all over the place. Certainly now at CMU, some of you probably know that just a few weeks ago, uh, the state was good enough to name us as one of 10 smart zones in the state, which just simply means that the state will encourage technology-related growth, certainly business growth, at CMU and Mount Pleasant. I should also say, too, that in a general sense, CMU places about 95% of its graduates within the first semester after they graduate. 
um, much like Mission and much like Montana. And uh, we work to diligently uh, build relationships with our employers. Most of those employers are in rapidly growing fields. But let me tell you what happened. In each of these three cases, as we've tried to build partnerships, what we've learned are some very interesting things. We thought at first that in each of the cases, uh, these employers would try to encourage the universities to focus practically on technical skills or skills that are specific to a particular industry or even to a particular company. And we found out very much uh, the opposite. And this is what we continue to learn that they're looking for people who can take on more responsibility and manage themselves with minimal supervision. They're looking for well-developed use of communication skills. It's listening, but it's also connecting. Sometimes communicating may mean that I don't know what the language is, somebody else on the team, but I find ways to connect and communicate with them. Computation and technology-related logic. Not necessarily all kinds of information or knowledge about technology, but technology-related logic. People who could understand uh, how the mission of the organization would fit together with the work that an individual actually does in their job was also considered important. Creativity. How many people would have thought that that was going to be an important thing for an entry-level person? Very important, says all of these employers in three states at three different locations. Understanding the widest possible range of people, their cultures, their interests, their values, and their needs. Remember, in many cases, this is your marketplace. People who are all very, very, very different. And surprisingly, respect, respect and appreciation for all kinds of people. Um, certainly, being able to function effectively in a diverse team environment is very, very important and follow through and trust were also considered to be very, very important in that environment as well. And so what these things are doing is that they're starting to gauge a lot of the ways in which lead, we try to lead CMU. We also found too, by the way, that employers were looking for a new kind of work ethic, the ability and desire to engage in lifelong learning. Not, oh, my college degree is over, but the rate of change is so great in fact, we think that the, the amount of information out there doubles every two to three months. If that's the case, we need to be able to learn fairly rapidly. Here's some interesting things that helped me guide and help guide me in the first year and some of the things that we've uh, initiated at CMU. Of course, I went to the Michigan Department of Career Development and found out that they are projecting about 180,000 new jobs that will require some form of training beyond high school in a 10-year period from 1996 to the year 2006. And of those, 85%, they say, will require a bachelor's degree. Good news for a university if we do things right. Let me give you my projection. I think 90% of all of the jobs that I, that I sift through when I look at the Department of Labor's projections will require significant training beyond high school. Admittedly, not necessarily a bachelor's degree, but without question training beyond high school at a significant level. Higher education is clearly no longer for the elite, but it is just about for everybody. And I know that most of you in this room will go, but by the time I finish talking, I hope I've convinced you that you've got to be thinking about more than just yourself, <clears throat> but everybody in your community, and encouraging all of these folks to get involved in some form of training beyond high school. There's an interesting survey of Michigan employers, too, that identified a number of things, but I'll just tell you the top two things that, that came out in this official survey, unlike some of the more anecdotal things that we identified in our work with employers as a university. They said, number one, complex thinking skills. Probably gets back to that creativity thing. And the ability to adapt to constant change, number two. No surprise. And certainly the pattern now that I think most employers are, are aware of and most communities are now aware of is that on the average you will probably change jobs 10 times in your lifetime. And every time you change, you will probably have to do something to get ready for that change, something new that you will have to learn in order to uh, be prepared. And certainly college is going to give you the base that you need in order to learn um, and certainly succeed, but it will not be everything. I have to tell you, it will absolutely not be everything. By the way, not only will you be likely to change jobs 10 times, but typically you'll change your whole career five times, they say. That'll be interesting to see whether or not that actually happens in your lives. 
but it appears to be likely given the fact that so many people change three and four times now. As I said, I don't think that going to college alone is going to be enough of what you need in order to survive, <clears throat> or I should say thrive, which is what you should do, and succeed. Your own initiative and your own leadership is going to play a major role in your ability to succeed. In fact, I want to make the claim in America that the transition to an intellectually based society will require that every single one of us be leaders using our brains, not necessarily just our hands. And certainly the thing that I want to make sure you feel from me is that I feel very, very strongly about the fact that every single one of us has to be the very, very best at what we do. Not garden variety, the very, very best at what we do. If you decide to become a mechanical engineer, you are not competing with a mechanical engineer down the street in Port Huron. You are competing with mechanical engineers throughout the entire world. The entire world. Things suddenly change now when you think about that. The thing I have to say about America is that Mediocrity is probably America's greatest liability that we face right now. Companies used to hire these line workers with relatively few requirements beyond their ability to follow directions and rules. Nothing wrong with that. That's just the way the world was. Now, successful workers at every level have to be leaders in their roles who focus on teams and creative ideas that will advance the quality of life for everyone, not just me, but everyone. I have a motto that I used and I started at Mission College and I noticed that Conoco has stolen it, but it was mine first, I want you to know that. And it was, and it was really important to the team. And it was focus, think big, and act fast. If I, could focus, if I could concentrate on those three things, it really did help me make sure that I was spending my time in the right ways. And, and, and so for the team as well. Today's leaders really do have to be able to inspire other people to think, innovate, and unite into teams or groups in order to solve problems that are clearly way too big for any one person to solve. They have to help people think strategically and seize opportunities that are good for absolutely everyone on the team. They thrive on the challenge that comes from, from the reality of competition that exists in every field and every sector. They apply what they've learned not just learn something for knowing it, but they are able to use what they've learned, are creative and able to focus on outcomes rather than confining thinking within parameters, structures, or boxes. They function, and I'll say this again, I, I don't think I can say it enough, they function very effectively in diverse environments. They see the value of diversity, understand the basic values and interests of people from all kinds of backgrounds, and afford those from other backgrounds due respect and appreciation, not just tolerance. In fact, I want to make the claim that diversity gives us the access that we need to lots of different kinds of thinking and ways to approach problems. I have seen it. I came from California. I have lived in a majority, uh, minority environment, a very, very diverse environment, not just characterized by, by ethnicity alone, but by many, many sorts of differences. Some most good, some not all so great, <laughs> but nonetheless, um, California, turns out, is still the sixth largest economy in the world if you separate it from the rest of the United States. I saw California succeed. By the way, the rest of the United States is the 12th largest con economy in the world when you take California out of it. So it's an interesting thing to think about. And I really do think that California has found ways of making a great use of diversity. I really do think that effective leaders are people who can look at the world globally. They can see the big picture. Something that stunned me the other day that I just learned was that, and, and I think I knew it, but it just really hit home, 95% of the world's consumers are not in the United States. Interesting implication about the marketplace, isn't it? A very interesting implication about leadership. So let me drive home a couple of points that, that I hope I've, I've hit about leadership in particular. Focusing on excellence and being the very, very best that you can possibly be. Focusing on he helping others experience excellence and accepting responsibility for their development. And for many of you in this room, that will be very, very important, as hard as it may seem to accept. Largely, I think your willingness to be a, a player on the team is, is going to be a, a critical thing, even if you are called the boss. Focus on building st strong relationships that are based in trust, and integrity, honesty, and trustworthiness you will find very quickly are essential to any kind of effective leadership. 
people who can't be trusted are usually not followed, even if they are called the boss. So I think you can probably see why we at CNU believe that leadership is a key component of what we focus on and how we build our programs. So I want to issue, a, issue you a challenge. I issue you the challenge to endure your quest for discovery and for knowledge, to focus on excellence, to strive to be the, the, to be the very best that you can possibly be in your fields, to become leaders in a growing worldwide marketplace. We really do need absolutely every one of you to realize that your initiative, what you start, your commitment to excellence, your ability to thrive from the excitement of competitive challenges will make our communities, will make Michigan, our country, and I would say the human experience the greatest that they can possibly be. Finally, outside of my topic of, of discussion, Melissa, Jeff, Colleen, Nicole, two Jennifers, Kelly, Lindsay, two Aarons, Sarah, two Elizabeths, and Andrea. Welcome to CMU. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. to the real heart of the program where we celebrate with our students in their honor. But we're going to deviate just for, for a brief minute on the agenda because Dr. Rao has to pay a babysitter and he has to get back to CMU, which is a long drive. He's gonna be here for a little while, but they are gonna be having to leave be probably before we're done. So I'd like to uh, take just a moment and ask Dr. Sollinger to join me again at the podium. And we have a, a gift for Dr. Rao that I think he will find very interesting and unique. And we hope that we will see it somewhere around his office when we go to visit him at CMU. And maybe some of you graduates that are gonna be on campus can go in and check to see if you see that there. So we're gonna ask you to open this if you could join us. Tremendously, as has as have has Monica. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Rao, Monica, we thank you very much for being with us, and we certainly appreciate your words. Hearing a lot of that kind of information and working with with young people, your comments tonight are right on target. That's the world we're going to be living in, and what we're going to be educating our students for. Thank you again. I'd also like to thank Bill Johnson and Judy for joining us tonight and for arranging for the speaker. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Bill is one of the strongest leaders this community's ever had, and I've had the opportunity to work with him. He always helps whatever you ask him to do, and we certainly appreciate it tonight. Now, we'll get into the important business at hand. <clears throat> We're going to ask we're going to take our time, and we're going to try to keep it moving. I'm going to call the student's name, have you come up. Mr. Sharon, and Dr. Sollinger, and Mr. Kraft will present you with your award. We will certainly encourage pictures. If mom and dad want to come up and get a picture, feel free to do that. As we get to that point, I'll call the next student so we can just kind of keep it moving. Everybody ready? Okay. <laughs> Lisa Bahur, Portrain Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Q. 
Terry Baldwin, Portsmouth Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. Brooke Baca, Portsmouth Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. Casey Barkley, Portsmouth Northern, fourth year bar. High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Abigail Beerman, Portier Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Catherine Beck, Portier Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. Malin Bernoski, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Janelle Lynn Bigga, Fort Huron High School, valedictorian, fourth year bar. Christopher Tristan Bombard Bomber, Fort Huron High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, third year bar. Adam Boyd, Fort Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. Melissa Sue Brown, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Patrick Brown, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Katie Burgett. Fort Huron Northern, valedictorian, fourth year bar. <laughs> Russell Burkhart, Fort Huron Northern, academic scholars diploma, third year bar. Jerry Lynn Burns, Fort Huron High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Corey Campbell, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Matthew Carberry, Port Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Julia Carolyn, Port Huron Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. Lacey Carr, Fort Huron Northern, second year letter. <laughs> Emily Carter, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar.
Frank Cassidy, Porter Northern, fourth year bar. Angela Susan Coors, Port Huron High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Kelly Cole, Port Huron Northern, third year bar. Megan Marie Conlin, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Nathan Cote, Port Huron Northern, third year bar. Kelly Coglin, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> John Culbert, Port Huron Northern, valedictorian, fourth year bar. Neil Dalal, Port Huron Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Port Huron Bar. Carly Dehinoff, Port Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. Aaron Diaz, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <clears throat> Amy Dickinson, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. Bridget Dingman, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Michael F. Dion, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. Aaron Kathleen Domke, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Lindsay Edmondson, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Nicole Renee Emla, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Sarah Jane U. Epley, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. Erica Ernst, Port Huron Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> J. 
Jeffrey James Fogel, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Christopher Fultz, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Andrea Fraser, Fort Huron Northern, valedictorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar. Anthony Gans, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Mary L. Gurdon, Fort Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Carly Gerstenberger, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Giske, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Colleen Gillen, Fort Huron Northern, third year bar. <laughs> Peggy Ray Gilbert, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Craig M. Good, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Stephen Gordon, Fort Huron Northern, valedictorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar. Nicole Marie Grace, Fort Huron High School, salutatorian, fourth year bar. <laughs> Matthew Harrison, Fort Huron Northern, salutatorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar. Jonathan Hastings, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Melissa Sue Highway, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Danielle Hickey, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Amy Howison, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Joseph A. Hustick, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar.
Maher Z. Iskander, Port Huron High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, third year bar. Scott Jameson, Port Huron Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Kathleen Ann Jewell, Port Huron High School, Valedictorian, fourth year bar. Amanda Johnson, Port Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Lori Keith, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Stevens Kelly, Port Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Carrie Jo Kelly, Port Huron High School, second year letter. Saad Kunail, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. Jacqueline Kinney, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Rebecca Kirk, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> William L. Kitchen, Port Huron High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. John Kane, Port Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Joshua Kane, Port Huron Northern, second year letter. <laughs> Christina Kozel, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Nicole Renee Ladd, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Teresa Lader, Port Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Kevin Lane, Port Huron Northern, Valedictorian, fourth year bar.
Karen Eileen Langoff, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. Jennifer Lynn Laturno, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Catherine Lau, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. Kelly Gail Latart, Fort Union High School, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Kellen Elizabeth Lynch, Fort Union High School, Fourth Year Bar. Brian A. Maness, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Melissa Marcero, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Don M. Morocco, Fort Union High School, third year bar. <laughs> Andrew Marska, Fort Union Northern, valedictorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar. Melissa Sue Matthews, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Amy N. May, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. Lindsay McDougall, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Trevor McFarland, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Ryan John McInnes, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. I'm sorry, that was Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. Sorry about that. That's serious stuff. Congratulations. <laughs> Lindsay McKelvey, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Cassie Danielle McLaughlin, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Brandon Robert McNamee, Fort Union Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. Michelle Marie McFedrin, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Renee Joy Meredith, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar.
Michael Nicolakis, Portier Northern, fourth year bar. School, valedictorian, fourth year bar. James Alexander Miller, fourth year in high school, fourth year bar. Ryan Charles Mills, fourth year in high school. Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <coughs> Eric Merkin, fourth year Northern. Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Sarah Moran, Fort Huron Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Lawrence Moserak, the Third, Fort Huron Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Wyatt Murr. Fort Huron High School, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Marissa Lee Nill, Fort Huron High School, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. Kathleen A. Nunn, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Christy Nunn, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Aaron Nicole O'Connor, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Andrew Ogden, Fort Huron Northern, valedictorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar. Joanna Olmstead, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Pilo, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Elizabeth Pettigo, Fort Huron Northern, fourth year bar. Misty Ann Pelt, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Matthew Kirk Phipps, Fort Huron High School, third year bar. <laughs> Sean. 
Charlene Marie Picklehop, Fort Union High School, Val Victorian, fourth year bar. Beth Marie Prokoska, Fort Union High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, fourth year bar. <laughs> Joseph Raisinon, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. Justin Michael Rao, Fort Union High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Jerome George Recker, Fort Union High School, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. Lindsay Richards, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Ashley Richardson, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. Mary Rigney, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Jordan Robinson, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. Christy Rowling, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Jenny Ann Rosborski, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. Jay Shields Sapp, the second, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Eric Lejean Satterfield, Fort Union High School, fourth year bar. Ashley Schur, Fort Union Northern, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fort Union Bar. Christina Lynn Schneider, Fort Union High School, Fort Union Bar. Jordan Schrader, Fort Union Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Jade Semrown, Fort Union Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. Rebecca Seppel, Fort Union Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Michael K. Setter, Fort Union Northern, valedictorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar.
Autumn C.D. Scheimer, Portier High School, fourth year bar. Slupski, fourth year Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Laura Ann Smith, fourth year high school, fourth year bar. Devin Stein, fourth year Northern, fourth year bar. Blake Stevens, fourth year Northern, valedictorian, academic scholars diploma, fourth year bar. Michelle L. Sullivan, Portion High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Melissa Allenbrook, Portion Northern, first year pin. Heidi K. Wager, fourth year Northern, fourth year Bar. <laughs> Jessica Walker, fourth year Northern, fourth year Bar. Amy Sue Wallace, Portier High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Chris Warshewski, Portier Northern, fourth year bar. Jacqueline Sue West, Portier High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> Elizabeth Westbrook, Portier Northern, second year letter. Michael Whaling, Portier Northern, Valedictorian, Academic Scholars Diploma, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Kyle Weimer, Portier Northern, Fourth Year Bar. Jessica L. Williams, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. <laughs> William Paul Williams, Fort Huron High School, fourth year bar. Jennifer Wilson, Portier Northern, Valedictorian, fourth year bar. <laughs> Rachel 
Rachel Weimer, fourth year Northern, fourth year Bar. Megan Patrice Goitas, Portier Northern, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Carrie Ann Wood, Portier High School, Fourth Year Bar. <laughs> Nathan Ewell, Portier Northern, Valedictorian, fourth year bar. <laughs> Andrea Jane Zoner, Port Huron High School, fourth year bar. Allison Marie Zelke, Port Huron Northern, fourth year bar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's congratulate the class of 2001 Academic Scholar. We're almost done. We have just a couple things to, to take care of before uh, we go on our way. I, I, first of all, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for their leadership. For 17 years they've done this. This is a phenomenal effort. And I'd like to thank Dr. Sollinger for his leadership. does a great job. I'd also like to thank uh, Lisa Hatch for her help, the new director, uh, the executive director of the Chamber. And I'd like to make just a few brief introductions of some of the people that certainly deserves some of the credit for the students doing as well as they do and for the great schools that we have in Port Huron, and particularly our great high schools. First of all, I'd like to ask Mr. Ron Willing, Principal of Port Huron High School, if you would stand. <laughs> the Principal of Port Huron Northern, Mrs. Joanne Monaghan. Assistant Superintendent of the Port Huron Area School District, Mr. Tom Miller. One of our Executive Directors, Mr. Gordon Jameson. Mr. Jameson and Mr. Miller play a big role in this, getting to this point, and I'd like to publicly thank them for the work they do along with Mr. Kraft. Now, one of the better parts of the program, we could not do the job in public school education anywhere near as well as we do, and I'm particularly proud of the way we do it here in Port Huron because we have a great teaching staff. And all of you sitting here have the experience over the years of those wonderful teachers. One of the, the thoughts that the Chamber had a number of years ago is that we should have the students recognize a teacher from their school, from each high school, they really play a major role in, in helping to shape their education. So for uh, the last agenda item here tonight, I'm gonna ask a couple of our students to help me, and we're going to recognize these teachers that deserve this honor. First of all, I'd like to have uh, introduce uh, Jennifer Wilson, President, Port Huron Northern High School National Honor Society, and ask her if she would come up and also Janelle Bega, President, Port Huron High School, National Honor Society, asked her if she would come up. And we're gonna start with Jennifer, and I'm gonna ask Jennifer to come to the podium first and make some comments, and then we'll uh, introduce the teacher that uh, Port Huron Northern High School has selected, and we will ask them to make a brief comment or at least be recognized. Jennifer. Thank you. 
Um, it is my honor tonight to introduce Port Huron Northern's most influential teacher of the year. Students have nominated this teacher for his dedication to them and also because of his style of teaching, which makes his subjects so much fun. It has been said that he has given his students the direction and tools they need to be successful in many obstacles that lie ahead of them. He has shown enthusiasm for teaching and a willingness to help his students reach their full potential. With all of these wonderful qualities, it is no surprise that our Teacher of the Year is Mr. Michael Artman. A teacher to be selected by their students as the one person who has made the greatest difference in their high school career is a true honor, and it is one that I will cherish for many years, even after I leave Port here in Northern. The one thing this award has caused me to do is to look back on the last two years and to recall some very fond memories. The one I will never forget is the day that 30 students arrived unexpectedly at my doorstep at 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> following the cancellation of the EP exam. Not sure what to do, I quickly said, let's go to Diana's for breakfast. Uh, and who could forget the night of the candlelight home tour when many students dressed in costume and didn't walk Brian Day dressed in khaki pants and a pinstripe suit or shirt. Everyone seemed to know who he was supposed to be, but of course it took me two hours to figure out he was Mr. Hartman. <laughs> and finally, how will we ever forget those original songs that Joe Raisinen would not only wrote, but perform for us every year? But on a more serious note, this award has also made me reflect on my own high school career at Northern and the journey that brought me to this podium tonight. As a result, I would like to dedicate this award to the teachers who made a difference for me. People like Mildred Rush, my ninth grade social studies teacher, who instilled in me a thirst for knowledge and a desire to travel the world. Iris Nelson, whose pr professionalism not only served as a role model, but caused me to minor in biology. Bob Trapp, who taught me to have confidence in myself and to learn that public speaking could actually be fun. Jim Duncan and Nancy Conlon, who taught me the joys and the depths of literature. Mike Deneen, who had the patience to help me every morning with my math and make me realize that even I could master geometry. And Fred Green, who showed me the importance of incorporating humor into my classroom. But the real reason I'm here tonight is because of my American history teacher, Mr. Glenn Pike. It was in his class that we discussed the current events of the day, events like the bombing of Cambodia or the shootings at Kent State and the continuing struggle for civil and equal rights. And it was in his classroom that I started to develop my own ideas and my own opinions and to question my government. And it was in his classroom that I made the decision to be a teacher. Thus, I want to thank you for this award, but also I want to thank my teachers who made this award possible. So thank you very much. It means a lot. So. for the Teacher of the Award Year Award for Port Huron High School is a well-deserving one. Uh, he has been at PH for many years teaching and I've had the privilege of being in his Spanish class. Congratulations, Mr. Owens. second hour classes here, your assignments still do. <laughs> Don Quixote. Yes, it is. <laughs> the revered, Don Quixote, the revered man of the world and Spanish literature, the somewhat naive and senile man of La Mancha, who I'm accused of being, <laughs> set out from his lofty villa in search of honor and glory and the fulfillment of his impossible dream to correct the wrongs of the world he lived in. This was his dream, his ideal, his quest. He envisioned greatness where others merely saw the mundane things. He saw a herd of sheep as a great army. 
To him a windmill was a giant to contend with. A barber's bowl bedazzled his eyes as a golden helmet, and a lowly lady of the evening became his damsel in distress. He continued on, though ridiculed, injured, and harassed. In your future, there are hopefully similar dreams to make things as they could or could not be. Don't let the frustration and anxieties that come from failure discourage you from your quest. Life needs you and what you have to offer it. Meet its challenges, attack with the strength you have been given, and when you are knocked down by the windmills, get up and go on. I thank you for this honor you have bestowed upon me. May life be kind and gracious. May your decisions be thoughtful, wise, and sensitive to those around you. Thanks again and good luck to your journey and for the Trekkies into your undiscovered country. And yes, James, even cardboard boxes have wheels. <laughs> A little private joke. Uh, most of the kids in the Spanish classes will know that the word casa and caja are very close. And James has always lived in a caja. And, <laughs> and we so second hour built him a caja. And he has it at home. Now it has wheels, James. <laughs> Two great teachers, you see them everywhere, involved with kids, very representative of the staff of the Port Area School District. For a brief closing remarks, I'd like to call on Ken Kraft and thank him one more time for the hundreds and hundreds of details that he took care of to make tonight possible. Thank you very much, Ken. To everything there is a beginning and an end. This evening we have shared in a special ceremony honoring the accomplishments of our children, those who will soon exit our educational program to venture into new experiences in life. They will insist they are now adults, even though we know they will always be our children in our hearts. Nevertheless, they stand on the threshold of tomorrow's opportunities, ready to end one stage of life as they embark on another. As parents and as educators, we must let them go, trusting that we have given them the skills and the confidence to tackle whatever the future holds. Students, we are looking forward to seeing you become successful in whatever you choose to be, be it actress, athlete, physical therapist, engineer, teacher, doctor, scientist, veterinarian, or any of the countless dreams that are about to be tackled and fulfilled. In the meantime, be ready for life's surprises. Our honor celebration now comes to a close, but just around the corner is another new beginning, another fresh start. Good luck in all that you do, and thank you all for coming. Good night.